Okay, uh, my name is Beatrice. I'm the service manager for the Child and Adolescent Bereavement Service, which is an NHS service based at Northampton General Hospital. And we outreach into primary and secondary schools offering pre bereavement support and bereavement support. Okay. And my name is Helen, and I'm one of Beatrice's counsellors. Okay, so I get asked a lot about how can we support children who, um, you know, who, who suffer a, a close family bereavement. And it's basically creating a safe space where a child can tell their story and have it acknowledged by an adult who's just active listening skills. And how do you create that safe space? What makes a space feel safe? I think the child has to have protected time. They have to know each time that slot will be available, that member of staff is going to be there for me. We use all the safeguarding rules, but the child knows it's a safe space and whatever they say, um, they can free to talk about whatever they want. It's basically about creating a safe space to hear the hurt, hear the story from the child's perspective. Because <coughs> we all have our own opinions, but that child tells the story about how I feel about the death of a parent, my pet, somebody significant, it's that safe space for that child to be heard. And the kind of thing that sometimes people say to me is, I'm worried that if I get them talking about this they're going to get really sad, really upset, I'm going to make things worse. Yeah. Actually children look to adults to role model grief behaviour. I'm a great believer that children should have the choice to attend funerals, they have the right to say goodbye to somebody they love has died and they will look to you how to behave. So I say do get angry, do get sad, do get upset because you're saying to the child all these feelings are okay. Okay. As long as you know, old enough to ask, old enough to be told. That's my, my kind of key message. And what kind of conversations do you end up having, Helen, then, with, with, with young people? I think it's very interesting the comment you just made about not being able to say certain things, and um, very often in the course of my discussions, a child will say, well, we don't like to say things at home because that will upset mum or dad. And so they're keeping all this stuff bottled up inside them. It's lovely then that as counsellors we're able to go into school, have that time with them, have that safe space and create a relationship where they are able to express themselves. But that's, that's just really important is building the relationship with them and then letting them just express themselves and you know that we obviously we use the books with older children we, we offer journals so very often if they don't quite know how to put it straight away um, they can go home and write up stuff and just keep their own and then bring that in week on week and maybe talk about things that way. So it sounds like one of the main things that you're, talk, you're sort of saying is that every feeling is, is valid um, and that we need to be talking about this not, not pretending. That There's no right or wrong way to grieve. Um, you grieve your own way and we just support that. I say if you break your leg you need a crutch. Once the leg is better you get rid of the crutch and then we drop out. And how long is it okay to grieve for? As long as it takes. I mean my parents have been dead 28, 29 years. I'm still grieving. But it, it's easier. It gets easier. It never goes away. It's a bit like a wound that heals that has a scar and you can knock it and it hurts. And anything else that you think that, um, so schools in particular I often work with, anything that they should be aware of if they've got a child who's had a recent bereavement? Things I think it's speak to the parents. I say, do you have any religious, spiritual or cultural belief I need to be aware of? I don't care what they say as long as it's not harming the child and we work with that. That's really important, particularly in Northamptonshire because we're such a diverse um, county. And it's such a massive thing for a, a teenager or a young person who's going around their day-to-day -day business and they're grieving, they're carrying this massive weight that there's an awareness, that teachers are aware, um, you know, that they are not excused, not bad, not excusing bad behaviour, but just that there is an openness within the school, um, you know, and, and that they are able to talk and express themselves there. For primary age children we use a variety of resources, we've got workbooks, these are produced by a charity called Winston's Wish, so these are art and craft workbooks. For the slightly older child we have the same sort of thing but it talks more about feelings and these are a very familiar thing that you know we can teach um, school staff to use. We've got a lot of books about, this is a very old one, um, books about animals that have died are often a really useful tool because a child's first experience of somebody they love dying is often a pet, so we use a lot of books like like this you have specific books like granddad um, dad gran um granddad's ashes okay. and you had did you have a journal you said something yeah so just just something just, just something to die, just, yeah. some sort, just literally yeah. so they um, can... puppets are another thing we use i mean that's really important puppets that, that reflect the diverse community puppets of animals